Good to see everyone again. We have just uh, had our first Sunday back indoors since March, I think 7th. And so it was really good just to be back. And uh, I think the thing that we enjoyed the most was actually being able to hear everybody sing. Um, even being outdoors, you still get to hear uh, other voices. And it's just so important part of congregational worship is that encouragement and teaching one another that happens largely through singing. And so that was just a sweet time uh, as we've been able to, to meet here and uh, relatively incident free. I know we've got some things we've got to work on with our, our live stream and we'll be working on that to make that better uh, for everyone. But we even had a few folks outdoors uh, listening in. Uh, some of them, I think one or two of them may have been in their car and they could hear everything fine uh, in their car. And so uh, whatever it takes, you know, for people to be here together and to assemble together. Um, some had masks, a few did not. Um, but the main important part is that we are gathered together and we're taking care of one another, praying for one another, loving one another, uh, singing and worshiping with one another. And it's just so, we missed it. And so I appreciate so much of us being able to do that. And that's our plan right now, uh, is to do that again this Sunday. And so we're going to try to figure out ways to improve everything. Uh, we are also in a very important time in our church life uh, in that we have had now elders for uh, five years. And uh, it's the time where normally uh, what we would hope to do is be able to give those guys that have been elders a break and, and have some rotation. Uh, but we didn't think wise to have all of us uh, step away at one time. And so uh, Jeff Hillis has agreed to be the first one uh, to rotate off. Uh, he's just uh, being burdened by his uh, desire to be, elder, to be an elder and yet be proximate, be close by. And just in the season of life they're in, they're spending some time in Alaska with family and other times uh, because they can. And, and so uh, we're going to be looking for someone um, and praying about that to see uh, should there be a replacement uh, for Jeff? And if so, who might that be? And so this coming Sunday, uh, we are hopeful to be able to provide some kind of recommendation forms. We'd like to hear from our church body. Uh, the question that we're asking is, is, if something happens to me, uh, who are the ones that we look to to pastor our church? Um, and, and these are the ones we're asking to go ahead and step forward and pastor, oversee uh, the direction of our church. And so they have been extremely helpful for me in the last five years. Uh, they have, uh, honestly, I'm not sure how I could have gotten through some of the things we had to go through, uh, if, unless there were uh, others alongside so I just want to remind everybody, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, says, So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker of the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And so we see these, these three terms of pastoring or shepherding, uh, being as an elder, uh, overseeing, uh, all these three terminologies referring to the same group of people. And, and so this gives us also the, the spirit of which the elders are to be, that they are shepherding elder, elders. They're not ruling elders, but they are... Uh, elders that are called to lead and shepherd uh, the direction of the church as well as to help in the oversight of people themselves spiritually in the direction that they go in. Uh, and so 1 Timothy 3 gives us some uh, very powerful qualities of, of which should describe the elder that they're going in this direction. I encourage you to read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 as it gives uh, some of that uh, direction for us. And let's be in prayer about that as elders. Uh, we want to be also in uh, praying heavily uh, for this time and season uh, that we'll be looking at that. And so I just want to let you know that that'll be coming your way. But please go ahead and pray about this now. Uh, and that God would call out uh, those that are in a church that are going in this direction. And that as a church, we'd be producing people going in this direction. And so we look forward to that. Uh, we want to give you another uh, video 
that will talk about how to share the gospel in your everyday conversations. And in fact, I think in a very uh, relevant way, this time of our life is called the three circles, uh, where you uh, have discussions where begin with talking about the problems of this world and how the problems of the world points to the gospel. And yeah, you know, it seems like every conversation I'm having with somebody is talking about the problems of this world. Uh, and so because that is such a prominent conversation title, uh, it is easy for us to, to look at ways to bring Christ into that conversation. So uh, watch and listen to uh, this video and to see how we can be better able and equipped to share the gospel. Thanks, guys. So one day I was at a restaurant with some friends, and our waitress's name was Love. And uh, we offered to pray for Love, and uh, she allowed us to. And then she came back, and I just asked her a simple question. I said, Love, has anyone ever shared the gospel with you before? And she said, no. I said, could I show you a simple way? It'll only take a minute. She said, sure. So I said, love, if you turn on the television or look at your Facebook feed, it's clear that we live in a broken world, right? She said, yeah. I said, there's a lot of death, a lot of disease, a lot of suffering. But we also see traces of beauty, right? Like the beauty of a sunset or the laugh of a child. And she agreed she had kids. And I said, but, but God's world, as it was created, was not broken. It was perfect. There was no death or disease or suffering or fighting. But starting with the very first people, we as humans chose to leave God's design and go our own way. And the Bible calls that sin. Sin is what has led us into uh, brokenness and sin in our life and our world. And we don't like to be in this brokenness. We try to get out. So in some cases, people try to get out by climbing the ladder of success. And others think, man, if I could just be religious and just go to church or be a good person, that that'll get me out. And others try to drown it out with drugs and alcohol or even attempts at suicide. And some try to immerse themselves in relationships. There's a lot of ways to try to escape this brokenness, but none of them allow us to escape. They just snap us in, back like a bungee cord into greater brokenness. But God loved us so much, He did not want us to stay in brokenness. And so He did for us what we could not do for ourselves and provided the only way out through His Son, Jesus. You see, Jesus came down into our world and allowed Himself to be killed on a cross. And three days later, he rose from the dead, defeating sin, defeating death. And he simply told us that if we would be willing to turn from our way and surrender to Jesus as the, the king or the boss of our lives, that we would then be forgiven and could be restored back into this relationship with God. Now I asked love, love, does this make sense? And she said, yes, it does. I said, there's two types of people in this world. There's those who are still in brokenness and those who through Jesus are back in God's design. Which one are you? And she said, man, I'm in brokenness. I said, well, where do you want to be? And she said, I want to be back in God's design. I said, okay, great. Well, when I chose to make this decision to follow Jesus, it just requires believing this. But I said a prayer to him very similar to this picture. I said, God, I'm very sorry for my sin, that I have, I have left your design, and, and I don't like being in brokenness. I want to turn from my way and believe that you came and died on the cross and rose from the dead for my sin, and I want to make you my king so I can be forgiven and restored back into your design. Is that a prayer you'd like to pray? And she said, I would. So love, right there with my friends, prayed to receive Jesus. And that's how you can share the gospel using the three circles tool.